A very grateful welcome back to Attigan Park for episode 7 with me, Mr CDP. We're back again. It's just before 3 o'clock. Our use of this part of the field now is, has created a track. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Now, on the back, I have got an Acura 10,000. It's a South American style spreader. And this was suggested by Google Pop, uh, one of the guys who helped set up my Discord server and um, run it, admin, along with the other guys on there. But Google Pop suggested this. In my kind of quest to try out different things and price versus capacity and all that kind of thing. I thought I'd give it a go. Now, I've only leased it. I haven't bought this at the moment. I am still waiting on the price for wood chips to reach its peak down that lower cross, which it's going to, and we'll sell some more. And here's kind of my options. There was obviously the manure spreader I used a couple of episodes back, but under fertiliser technology. I said about getting the braid out, which I looked at. Prices aren't horrendous. Capacities are pretty good. They will lime and fertilise. I did look at the Bruns, uh, the Bruns MBA 12,000. Now, it's always been one that has baffled me. It's the Bruns MBA 12,000, but it's an 8,000 litre capacity. And on the Mods Hub, that says that used is 10 grand to buy. And from the very first release of that, there's it's never been an option to have it used. So I did look at that. I used that on Oakfield, I think on FS17. Um, some of these are just fertilizer. Now, I talked about the Robust, which I'm still, for the price and the capacity, but the Acura, 10,000 litres, I'm going to have to go backwards and forwards a few times. It will do lime, fertilizer and manure. 24 metre spread, and it's only 13,554. Now, the MVU, is 11,000 litres. That only does lime and fertiliser, not manure, but 7,350. So there are quite a lot of options. Now, there are loads of versions of this, the Acura 10,000. Um, loads of, there's lizard ones, I think there's a Bandurante one. There's a, there's a whole load of sort of South American style. So I thought I would give it a go. Um, have I bought the night vision? When did I do that? I've got the the mad my mantra I've got the I don't remember buying that okay <laughs> if, if you say so uh, right so at the moment that's what we're looking at let's get spreading it should make a difference out to 24 meters like I say we're going to get through it fairly quick um, I need to come over quite a bit more because it's not spreading out as far as in my head I thought it would like I say, we are going to get through it fairly quickly, but that's fine. And we are now getting our pH level up into the green on the grass here. Now I'm going to do this before I plough out my, my section. I might as well. I'm going to do the pH level on the field anyway. But also ploughing the grass under on those sections, that should work as a fertilising state, shouldn't it? I'm not, I'm not too sure how it works with precision farming. I mean, usually if you're going to do um, a cover crop, grass is a great cover crop. Because you get a fertilising state kind of on it anyway. And if you do cultivate it in, you get the grass off it first. If you want to cut the grass and use the grass, then cultivate it in. So it's well worth doing. But as you can see, bottom left, liming is working well. Now when we get to our point, we are going to be building the bridge today. So while I'm doing some other jobs, a bit more liming, we're going to get the bridge built. It's all about building bridges. We're going to make a difference to the community. I feel like I do need to build some bridges with the community after my um, slightly nefarious behaviour and getting into the local newspaper. I think I need to make amends for that. I started by doing that by making sure I paid the guys at the lab for all the work they'd done. Um, and obviously cutting across people's fields. I've now asked for permission. I've got permission to use tracks and lanes and whatever. But I thought building a bridge there would be a fantastic way of helping out all the farmers locally. Well, anyone that uses it, of course. And I've, they've also got permission to come across my field. So like I say, it's all about building bridges. Now, we didn't get very far. So it is always that balance of price, spread width, 
What will it do? If it's just a lime spreader, fine. But if it does more than one thing, that makes it a little bit more kind of, that's a more useful tool. Uh, often with the larger capacities comes a much heftier price tag. There were a few that I looked at and, and I thought, oh, that looks really good, but the price was very high. Not that money is necessarily an issue. I'm just, <laughs> I'm providing consumer advice uh, in that, you know, with the wood chip situation. Now, I say that, the wood chip situation, once I've emptied that silo of all the wood chips, I have got a few more trees dotted around like this that I could cut down, but I want to leave some of these around the biogas plant so people locally don't have to look at the, the biogas plant. They kind of hide it a little bit. And I want to leave some trees around the farm area. I think I've used up pretty much all the trees I can. There might be some, if we look at the map and go across, and then uh, what do we want it on that? The periphery of the map, there's all these areas like along the lanes and around this area here where there are quite a lot of trees dotted around. This section here as well, where I might be able to get away with cutting down the odd tree here and there, but I think I'm at that point now where if I am going to do any more forestry, any more wood chipping, I'm going to have to buy a, a chunk of forest. I'm going to have to buy a chunk of woodland somewhere to actually make that work, um, which, which I can do. I absolutely can do, but I'm kind of viewing it that the wood chip situation isn't. It's not infinite. It is a finite resource at the moment. Oh look, our onions are growing. Are they? Oh no, that was, I thought they were. I thought we had growth for a minute then. Oh no, we have, we have. No, I'll take that back, look. It's a new crop, I've never done it before. It's a new crop to me. I've been looking at harvesters as well, and I've got my eye on a harvester. I'm not going to give anything away just yet. Uh, what I might also do is start taking on a few harvest contracts and using other farmer's gear uh, to try and build up a, a bit of a few different crops because it's like I said about doing a pig pen if I am going to do pigs I really do want to think about how I'm going to feed them there is another alternative that I've looked at and there is a local supplier of various different things I haven't asked too many questions but hopefully it's all pretty sound prices are very good and capacities are pretty good so I might be able to buy pig food to get myself started off again I don't know you know, there's, there's so much more. I, I can't believe I'm on what? Episode 7? What am I on now? 6 or 7? And what I'm loving is the fact I've done so many different jobs, so many different things, and I'm, I'm barely scratching the surface of getting the farm up and running. You know, it's, it's brilliant. So as you can imagine then, I have now got a load more lining to do. I'm not sure if I'll get away with I haven't got narrow tyres on this. I, do, I think I can put narrows on this fence. I'm pretty sure there's a twin narrow option, which would be quite cool. So I don't want to damage the crops, whether or not. I mean, yeah, no, I shouldn't really do it. I think it'll probably let me, but spreading lime on top of a crop that's already established, not such a good idea, I don't think. So like I say, I'm going to do some more. We'll give this a go. I'm not sure if I'm going to if I am going to stick with this, but if you've got smaller fields or you've got a setup or you want to get something fairly cheaply that will do a bit of everything, because this will do. How are we looking at that? That's down to seventy-nine thousand. That's still chugging away, and I've got a bit more in the in the uh, silage clamp to get rid of. Yeah, if you're looking for something that will do lime fertilizer and manure, these ones are you know pretty good, pretty good. Oh, I did. Did I mention? I'm trying to think what have I done. Um, I have now bought the cedar. Um, so the one that I had least, I sent that back. I have now bought it. So, <laughs> yeah. I'm at least, I say, at least in the first place because I wasn't sure. I really wasn't sure how it was going to work out. As it's turned out now, let's get that just about right. I was just trying to work out what I needed to line up to get it to go just right, but we're okay. So yeah, it's going to be a bit of backwards and forwards. Um, I, I think for me personally, I don't know really. I might just go for the robust again, or I might just go for the braid out. I, I really can't make my mind up. I'm, I'm being very indecisive over this. I think I want something with a larger capacity. 
think. But I'm willing to give things a go. That's the thing about it. Trialing out some gear. I, I didn't get this free. This is not a free trial from the company or anything. I, I paid for the lease of this. But I need to, oh plow that was a thing as well. I've got a few, a few a flu. I've got a flu options of plows. Um, again with that, I think I'm going to just end up going with the uh, is it John Deere the 24 meter one for the size, the price, the horsepower requirement. It's a bit of a no-brainer. There are again loads of options. My legal team have advised me to to mention. Other companies are available with all of these things. You know, there are so many different manufacturers, so many bits of kit, so many different things you can use. Um, it's finding the right thing for you, again, at the right price point, the right capacity, the right look. It might even be the right manufacturer. There might be a very specific set of criteria that you're looking at. And if it fits the criteria you're looking at, it's absolutely perfect. If it doesn't, it's not a problem. Plenty more things to be looking at. Right. So what do I do? Do I stick with this or do I go with the robust uh, plows then? Let's have a look. Yeah, 55 grand. Did I say 24 metres? It's a 24 10. 12 metres for 55 grand. But then you've got the RYC1 and the subsoiler. That one's eight grand for six meters. So you get two vehicles running that, two of those, that's 16,000, same width as that. Two of those equals one of those. Way cheaper. Yes, you need two vehicles, but it's an option. The subsoil of six meters, not overly expensive. Two of those is 34 grand. Still, you know, still cheaper than that, but it depends how you want to go about it. I'm now, I'm now really... Hmm. Do I go with the RYC? That one attaches front and rear. I've used that a lot. I used it on Stone Valley and it's in a brilliant bit of kit. Hmm. Again, I think I need to give that some thought before I before I leap into any rash decisions.
I guess it's time to try out the new bridge. Liming is done. I've been to the store. I have on the back a Horsch Maestro, which I haven't used in ages. I think it's a standard in game one I went for. On the front, I've got the Rowdy Christie six meter plow. Again, it's you know a combination of price, size, you know. I've used the 12 meter John Deere one a fair bit recently, so I thought I would just do something different. Now, hopefully, me doing the bridge was okay. As I always say, I'm not, it's not perfect. I'm not an expert of these things. However, there's a little bit of grass under there. I was trying to get to the texturing thing. I did it by accident. But the um, bridge pack by Sandhill Modding, Again, like I said in the last episode, thank you to everyone who commented about this. I was using the one from Alien Jim's placeables pack, and it would only let me do it if I owned this side of the land. And loads of people commented, so well, you don't need to if you use the Sandhill pack, it works no problem at all. And another reason why I've mentioned this so many times, and this had a recent update to have the XL bridge, was you can place it and you can you can change the landscape right up to it. It's absolutely spot on. So. Maestro on the back, plough on the front. I'm going to plough the field, and then we're going to put carrots in it. I'm hoping, size-wise, we're going to be okay for most stuff over here. If there's anything that's too big, we can always use the Ford. The Ford is still there, but this is just, you know, to help out. I'm going to put the Maestro to one side of the field. It's going to take a little while with a six metre plough, there's no two ways about it, but again, that's part and parcel. So the money has gone down. The Maestro was 93 grand, I think it was, and the plough was only about eight, wasn't it? I'm sure it was eight when I mentioned it. I'm still concerned about the grass situation on those two fields. The weird thing was, when I went from the first day into the second day after I'd cut the grass, the grass grew no problem at all. And I had my growth set on fast. For some reason, it just doesn't seem to want to grow. It, I'm, you know, I don't know why. Maybe by the morning it'll be okay. So I got the grass off this. I got what I wanted off of it. So. I'm puzzled. Where's... Hold ye horses. The lime I just put down, normally until you change the ground state, the lime stays there, the white on the surface, but it's gone. But it's over that side, it was still there. How weird. Okay, well. Now, I don't know if I'm going to extend it or whether I'll just keep the borders how they. Oh, I think I might just keep them how they are. So we'll have, hopefully by the morning, a couple of crops that are going to be ready to be harvested. Let's take it right to the edge. I haven't got the um, the now create fields, so I'm going to overlap a little bit just so I get the field edge absolutely spot on. Yeah, so hopefully by the morning we'll have onions ready to harvest. Our oat field will be ready to harvest, which means we'll be then be able to crack on with the straw. If I get this in the ground now, I'm hoping at least it'll be part way on the way to being done. Okay. So yeah, we'll have um, carrots ready to go as well. Price is still climbing for wood chips, so I'm gonna I'm gonna get the, obviously the maximum I can. So yeah, I was saying harvester I need. I've got my eye on. I mentioned it in the mod review. Depends when this post again. It depends when this post. It depends, you know, yesterday's video. And I apologise those people. I know I tried to get the videos up. Well, they were always used to be posted lunchtime. Um, sometimes it was sort of mid afternoon. It depended. Now, I mean, yesterday's video was ready to post at 
What time was it? Oh, it was 10 o'clock last night. It was late. It was another late one. Oh, it's just that little section there that's got the lime still showing. What I am going to do is create fields here. I think. Uh, boundary kind of goes around that. So what I'll do is just to tidy it up. I'll come across from about there. There we go, turn that back off. I've got sidetracked again and I forgot what I was saying. Does the fuel bench go right up to the track here? It goes over... hang on a minute. I have to turn create fields off, haven't I? Oh no! I hadn't turned it off. So the field edge is there. Yep. I'll tidy it up. I'll get some turf put down. We'll get the landscaping done on that. Yeah, so anyway, that's what I was saying. On the mod review uh, that I posted, well, today, i say the 14th, there's that new H, um, HR46. Sam Poro's new HR46. I might get one of those, you know. I was going to get a GNU. It's massive horsepower and probably completely over the top for the farm. But I think that HR46 being quite a multi-tool of, of a bit of kit. Price isn't too expensive. I'm just trying to work out my finances with regard to buying a harvester and getting that. I've now got a, a planter and a seeder. So I've got that covered. I haven't got any livestock equipment in, so I haven't got a feed mixer or anything like that. But I'm hoping, of course, we'll get paid at the biogas plant at midnight as well, won't we? All the stuff we're putting into the biogas plant now, we'll get paid at midnight. That's got to be 250 grand, 300? I'm just trying to think how much we put in it. Bear in mind, we kept 200,000 litres to one side. There's still over 500,000 litres, so it's got to be over a couple of hundred thousand there. So I reckon by the morning, we're going to be good for a harvester and another tractor. Um, just haven't quite decided. I do like the look of that HR46. So I think I'm probably going to go down that route. Again, it's a bit trial and error. We'll, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll see. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. The, the, um, I said about getting some forestry area. That would be the next step if I want to do more forestry. Obviously, there are some trees around the edges of the fields here, which I could take out if I wanted to. But, um, yeah, the forest over by Lower Cross Sawmill is only about 86 grand or something. And when you consider how much you could make off, you know, when I can get one of those big trees, is 42,000 litres in one go, a couple of those trees, that's paid for that woodland kind of immediately isn't it really so I don't know though again just ideas just you know thinking about it sheep wise I'm not too sure whether I might buy the sheep pen there the, the secret sheep pen or to buy the other farm to be honest with the secret sheep pen now we've got the bridge here and our fields go right up to this bit here and we have got plenty of grass fields so feeding the sheep wouldn't be a problem at all that might not be a bad shout as well, getting the sheep. So, I, you know, livestock is going to be a, a big chunk to come as well. Maybe I need to have a massive livestock day. Although I'm thinking if I do sheep over here, I might put a smaller silo, like a hayloft. Oh no, hayloft has to be hay. Somewhere I can store grass. Oh, I suppose I could do grass bales, couldn't I? There's no reason why I couldn't do some grass bales. I might do that, you know. There is a shed over there. You know what I'm going to do? Let's just disconnect that a second and whiz over. 
Uh, there is a shed, so I, I reckon what we could do is a load of grass bales, because we've got the grass, and we'll uh, get me, give me a chance to do some baling. I, I said about doing it all loose, but it also means I get to use that bit of baling equipment I've been wanting to use for a while. But if we buy this here, and we stick a load of grass bales in the shed here, like fill that with grass bales, You know what, I'm going to buy that now. Let's buy that. Uh, I'm going to be in that menu, that one there. 27 grand. Result. And there's a load of trees in there. <laughs> Although I think I'm going to keep them free. Yeah, I think that's... I've got all these. When I started this Let's Play and I said big plans, I wasn't joking. I didn't realise how big the plans were going to be, but I think as well because this is this has been such a different start. Because you don't start with a farm, you don't start with loads of gear, you don't start with everything you need to kind of get going. It is that, whereas a lot of times you've already got the farm, you've already got the equipment, you've already got a few fields, you know, you don't have to plan too far ahead, you can get going straight away. This has been a whole series of, you know, what do I do next? Where do I go next? What is my plan going to be? Now, that is, you know, that is true of most Let's Plays, but I just feel, it's, for me, it feels different on this one. And every episode, we're making a bit more progress, and a bit more progress, and we get a little bit more gear, and we're moving in the right direction. I just hope all the crops have grown by the morning, especially that grass as well. Right, I need to get to a point where, oh my dear, it doesn't really matter, I was going to say, I need to get to a point where I can get a work going on the ploughing, and then I can start planting, but I can't because I haven't got a tractor. <laughs> I don't have another tractor to run the plant. I don't think the quad bikes can have enough oomph to pull this plough, so... Could try it though, could It can't have, surely. What does this plough require? No, oh, that would just... That, I mean, last episode was unorthodox, that would be absolutely insane. Yeah, 180 horsepower, not even close. More time shall pass. Bearing in mind it's now five past four. Yeah, I definitely want to get this sorted out before it gets dark. And that's another reason why I didn't fertilise it. If I'd just been leaving it as grass, I would have got over here with the fertiliser, automatic application rate, got it fertilised. But because I was going to plough it, then put a crop in, I'll wait till the crop's in, and then we'll worry about what it's going to be. Actually, you know what? I do want to check. Uh, that's not showing anything, is it? Hmm. Let's go across one. pH, nitrogen. Right, so, as you can see, nitrogen level was sitting at 60 kilograms. By ploughing in the grass, in, in essence, you're ploughing in a cover crop, that's adding another 20 kilo... No, uh... 60, 40, yeah. We're up to the yellow, which puts us at 100 kilograms. So it's adding another 40 kilograms. 60 to 40. 60 to 40. <laughs> it's all right. 60 to 100. Um, which means when I come to put my crop in the ground and then fertilise, my nitrogen level may not change. Looking at that field, it certainly will be a lot less... I'm glad to see that it is changing with the ploughing though. Worth a look, wouldn't it? So we are adding 40 kilograms of nitrogen back into the soil by ploughing in this grass as a cover crop. Aaron Papa mentioned, me, mentioned that to me a little while ago uh, for the Italia demo when I was saying about um, organic and cover crops. And like, he'd said that grass is an absolute winner, you know. I think people tend to go down the route of the uh, all seed radish because it's there as a cover crop 
but grass, you know, it's perfect because you can have the grass off of it and then then it goes. And as far as planting, it doesn't use a huge amount of seed to put the grass in the ground in the first place, so... Well, it's good. The field is ploughed and now we're on to another first for me. Again, this may be something you've done loads and loads and loads, but I don't usually seed and fertilise at the same time. I will normally prep a field, try to get all the fertiliser states done whilst liming, cultivating, ploughing. I don't often apply seed and fertiliser at the same time. I, I, it's just something I've just got out of or into the habit of doing, it depends which way you look at it. Now, how does this work with regard to precision farming? Because you're, you, you're supposed to seed and then when you fertilise, the fertiliser is applied depending on what seed you put down. So if you're putting down seed and fertiliser at the same time, I've got it an automatic application. I'm assuming that it's going to do it based upon the crop. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't. That's kind of the point, isn't it? I've got it set on carrots. This is going to be a massive carrot harvest. I mean, absolutely ludicrous. <laughs> I don't know how heavy it's going to be for seed for the carrots. Obviously, this particular planter has way more fertiliser in it than it does seed. I could probably do with the front tank. That's something else I need to look at moving forward. I've got enough money actually, I might whiz off and get one anyway so I can get more seed. So I'll go and get one of my my old favourites. Now looking at what it's saying there, I don't recall expanding this field. Oh no, potentially I didn't do, um, oops, I didn't do my soil sampling out this far, did I? But it is, bottom left hand corner, it is automatically applying. I'm assuming it's automatically applying depending upon what it needs, it's not putting it onto maximum. If you can see on that menu where it's adjusting, please adjust. There we go. So it's adjusting what it needs to to get to that checkered flag rather than going all the way up to 200. It just it doesn't need it yet. So it appears to be doing what it should be doing. Like I say, for you guys, if you've been do if you've been doing precision farming for a long time and you normally seed and fertilise at the same time, this is nothing new for you. Um, for me, it is, because this is just something I, I just don't normally do. I know a lot of people ask me, why don't I? It's, like I said before, it's just a habit I've just kind of got into when I prep my fields. I kind of prep to the point where all the fertilising stages are done. I think it started off a lot of the times because there's fertiliser tanks were a lot bigger than the seed tanks and I would run out or the other way around and I would run out of one way before the other and it used to frustrate me so in the end I just started just doing one instead of both but we are getting green on the board I did tidy this edge up as you can see this is going to be a massive carrot harvest I mean absolutely gargantuan <laughs> it's a big thing Although the seed's not going down as quickly as I thought it would, nor is the fertiliser, which is fantastic. But I think to get from where we were, because we cultivated in, cultivated, we ploughed in, that's like, oh that's something else, I need a cultivator. Because we ploughed in the grass, that added 40 kilograms, what I need to go between that level and what carrots needs is a much smaller amount. I think it's saying what there, it's plus 60 kilograms. At the moment, some areas it was plus 40. 
so it's not a huge amount it's not having to put massive amounts of fertilizer down but it's exciting i was i was in my head thinking well i'll do the seeding i'll get i'll let that run get a worker going on that and i'll come back in a little while and i'll come over it again with the fertilizer but i'm not going to need to Is it daft that I'm really excited about doing the, the onion and carrot harvest? There you go, now it's only applying 40. Up to 60. Oh, I think because maybe the little strip it was going over. Now it's applying 80. Wow, cool. It gets mesmerising, you can just get zoned in on watching that all the time. Well, at least I know it's working. No, I could have gone with a much bigger planter, uh, you know. And I may well do, like I said, I may well change these as we move forward. I, I, you know, I, I haven't really kind of... I mean, the likelihood is I'll stick with this. I wanted it to be a bit more... Realistic's the wrong words, but kind of fit the area i don't always do that i suppose do i it's not really like i say it's not a realism thing but i have fond memories of the horse pronto and the horse maestro from uh, 17 and i don't know haven't used one in a while i was looking at the john deere's the db 60 90 and 120 but they are i mean the one is they're huge <laughs> absolutely massive bits of kit so i think for the time being we'll stick with this the sun will start to set soon it's just gone five o'clock i'm still keeping a price on the old uh, wood chips and it's um just get the angle on that right about there uh how are we looking 1300 at lower cross sawmill and it's still climbing I'll wait till it plateaus and then we'll sell that. I'm kind of excited about, like I say, about tomorrow. And that's going to be obviously the next episode. New harvester, possibly a new tractor. Harvesting of onions, potentially carrots, but our, our um, oats. And then sheep, pigs, cows. And that's not even looking at... As I, I know I keep alluding to the stuff I want to do up at Field 5, which is part of uh, Farmer Foley's plan for the expansion of the Attingham Trust and Attingham Park kind of venture. OK. I think... I'm just trying to think now. It's probably now some as good a time as any. Let me just check to see what kind of angle am I sitting at if I keep just the the large part of the uh, exhaust stack lined up that should see me right I do like doing some in cab um, I, I, I tend to do that more off camera <laughs> I decide I don't make mistakes I look like a right Charlie so uh, if I line that up there drop that down Thank you. If I keep that, I'll put an arrow to that if I remember in editing now. I keep that lined up with, with there and follow that. I should find if I come out of cab now. Yes, it's working. Although, in all honesty, it's one of those weird things that I can never remember which one it is. That and that there we go I should just do that I, I, I just I never use the ridge markers and I should because then I don't have to worry my next pass round I just just turn that off next pass round I just follow that line which I'll do in just a moment And so, coming around to the next pass, 
as you can see where the ridge marker was we just follow the middle of the bonnet on that again I'm not trying to teach credit to suck eggs but you might not have used a ridge marker before so I just keep that lined up then I've got to look at something over to the right to keep lined up there I just follow the nose on where that ridge marker was and we should be okay we are getting ridgy with it you're welcome and with that we're coming to the end of this episode uh, when I see you uh, next there will, should be an amount from the biogas plant and we should be good to go wood chips should be sold we should have a ton of money in the bank and then we can spend it all again um, and then do a load of harvesting and all the stuff I've been talking about doing but I hope you've enjoyed it if you have please give us a like if you don't subscribe yet please do if you want to leave a comment feel free and if you want to share this video then please be my guest whatever you should choose to do Thanks for watching.